All right, hello everybody. What is going on here? Real diversity. We are back. Oh, another video. This is a different one. I, well, actually, not different. We used to do a lot of reviews on um, some animes back in the day. Um, but I, I recently um, decided to watch Young Justice. Um, Rewatch, sorry. Well, both. A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Um, so I, I decided to watch Young Justice. Um, I noticed it was on HBO Max, and I said, well, I, it was other things I uh, I had it and I just decided hey it's, it's time to revisit this show I loved it I hated that it got cancelled at a certain point but I'm glad there are new seasons that it's been out a minute I, I'm pretty sure new seasons dropped a while back I'm just a little behind on watching it um, but I, I did decide I was going to just skip to like where I thought I like left off at but I decided hey I'm just going to rewatch the entire series front to back and I started with season one obviously so uh, I decided to make a little review about it and talk about some of the things that happened and things that they they did right, um, things that I liked, things that I didn't like, and uh, just kind of just some some plot things, things like that. So we'll get into the discussion. And but anyway, hope you guys do enjoy this. It's more like a podcast than anything. Disclaimer. So if you really you don't really have to like stare and watch the screen. I will at some point. I will go look at um, the episode. So I. I so I don't miss anything. I'll look at the um, like the descriptions just to make sure I, I didn't skip anything or forget anything. So we'll, we'll do that in it near the end after my general thoughts are through, just to kind of kind of converse on on some things that I might have missed. So so far, uh, I rewatched it and it was uh, it, there was a lot of things that, that I would remember. There was a, a lot of big plot holes that I I would remember. Um, um, from the first time around when I was younger and watched it. Uh, so I knew a few things. And, and obviously this review. So if you haven't seen season one, what are you doing here? So uh, and we, we will touch a little bit on early season two, but not um, not prior to the end. If you if you're if you like or just like recently just watched season one, didn't watch this video. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a disclaimer when we get to the season two point. So anyways. I uh, decided to rewatch it. So it started off. It was actually not start start there. Let, let me start at um, the big things I knew. So I knew, and this is not scripted. So I'm sorry if I have to pause or anything for a moment. This is not scripted, so I'm not. It's not going to be a perfect flow. I'm um, so sorry about that in advance. But so first thing that I knew. Let's talk about what I knew. So I knew that they were going. I knew. I knew the last episode. I remember that because that was like a big thing. I think on Cartoon Network when it, it initially happened, I think it was a pretty big promoted. So I, I ended up no, I seen the last episode of the season. So I knew what happened, and I knew the second to the last episode kind of too. So I, I kind of knew everything as far as um, Roy being the mole and things like that. So I, I, I knew a lot of that going going into it, and uh, but that was pretty much pretty much it I, I didn't remember too much of the small details um i do remember like the there was a desert desert episode i mean a few of the episodes i'm watching i remember but i don't i just didn't remember exactly what happened the orders the dialogue but i remember like the main key events like okay they all lost in the desert they all lost their memory i remember that i remember them all losing their memory in the desert but i could not for the life of me watch an episode why it happened until they showed it i was like okay that's right that's what happened. So a lot of it's so long ago that it wasn't fresh on my mind, but a lot of like the I knew it was familiar. Let me say it like that. It was familiar a lot of events. So but I knew the ending very well what was gonna happen. So that was no big surprise or anything for me. So anyways, um yeah, so they did a few things right. I want first the art. The art looks really great. Um it, it, it's really good art. Uh, the animation, I should say, uh, they 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 chose a good one. They didn't, you know, they didn't they didn't go too far out the but the the anything crazy. It, it, it's kind of not too off from um the like the the DC animation, the DCU, D, DCAU, the animated universe for DC. Um, I think that it's not too far from the, the current one. Uh, just a little bit. It's a little bit different. But anyways, it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, I, I can tell it probably is expensive to keep making them episodes. Uh, I would imagine. I don't know how frequent they were making them, but those are not like they're not that cheap. I can tell that the more I watched it, there were some times that you could tell they were like cutting a budget. And I will say this: 
I will say this. I noticed when um, Artemis' sister, um, Cheshire, I believe Cheshire is um, uh, the name of her, her like villain name or whatever. Uh, Artemis' sister, they gave her so much screen time anytime she was present because they did not have to animate her mouth. And a lot of times she wasn't doing anything but standing there. And it's, <laughs> it felt so noticeable. And it might have just been me, but I was like, man, it's, you can just tell that they would leave it on her for a few seconds. Her, you know, she's talking, you know, her mouth doesn't move because she's always wearing her mask. So it, it was very interesting to, to see that, um, that they were trying to do that. And I, I, I'm surprised they didn't do that more with Red Tornado because Red Tornado doesn't, like, his mouth doesn't move either. Um, but yeah, so I noticed that <laughs> there was a few small, it looked like they were trying to save some budget money or some or so at certain on certain scenes. Um, but but yeah, the art really nice. Like the animation, really great, solid. They didn't go with nothing childish. Um, this was this was pretty like not too far from like Teen Titans, but this was before Teen Titans Go. So I'm I'm glad they didn't. You know, and a lot of things were going towards a childish look. I think this came out like same time as Ben Ten was. Ben Ten still had the like I think it was Omniverse going on around that time. Maybe I could be wrong. Um, but you know a lot. But they they went a lot more cartoonish, childish later on. With a lot of the shows like this, these were more targeted for teens, um, and 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 they, they made sure they kind of kept it, they gave it a teen feel. So, as uh, yeah, pretty really great animation, really enjoyed it. So, what? So I want I want to hit on the dialogue for a second. The dialogue was really good as well. Um, they did a lot of things right. Um, a lot of things right. So they did a lot of the a lot of the dialogue was done well. Um, uh, it it's, and it felt like every character was distinguishable in the way they talked. It felt like um, you know you you could feel a lot of the. Uh, well, let me say this: I, I, there was I, they, there was a lot of. I, I, <laughs> the more I go back to the the early episodes, there was a lot of just like pointless joking and one thing i did not like as far as dialogue is how often wally hit on like every girl like and made like jokes so frequently it was it was almost like oh my gosh at times when megan when um when miss martian joined the team it seemed like every every chance he got he he took a shot at her i'm just like oh boy and that kind of got repetitive and tiring quick and just not something you want to see um all the time but it, it makes sense he was he's a teen they're all teens they're, they're younger so you know it's, it's just part it was it was just trying to be part of his character now we're, while we're on wally wally had to be he was he was very much interesting but he had to be the most disappointing character in the um in 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 the in the season in this show like just the whole like out of everyone i mean i mean everyone he he has to be the most disappointing and it's a shame because the flash is my favorite uh character in dc um probably right yeah i even put flash above superman but like in batman <laughs> they're, they're probably number three of my top three but um anyways the uh, he he's very disappointing for a few reasons one his character and personality wasn't that appealing and then secondly his uh, he was so underwhelming ability wise now like I think he was breaking the spout. Like he was somewhat under or around like the speed of sound. But this man, he was a he was around the speed of sound, but he he could not do anything useful. And this was a lot of writing to write around to write around him. Um, to just kind of to keep him like I because I mean you got to keep broken characters from being overpowered. But because because in all honesty, even at sub speed of sound, no one. Well, I would I think people could react to him, but it seems like everyone was taking hits from him. Everyone was reacting to him. I think even at one point, Taskmaster tossed tossed him or something. I mean, not Taskmaster, uh, uh, Sportsmaster. I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, what even? So it, he felt so underwhelming as, as a um, as a character. His ability is very disappointing to see that. Um, but everyone else was done really right. 
Um, except for Rob, I love Robin, but Robin, they might as well made him Explosion Boy, because Robin's only, only, like he, the only thing he did offensive wise was this. He he threw explosions left and right. He he expl- exploded everything. Every time this man did anything, someone it was an explosion. I'm like, this, all he threw was explosive batarangs. He set explosive traps. I mean, this man's only. Every time they need to break through a door, explode. Like, they might as well name. His, they might as well just gave him explosion powers. Cause I don't. That's all. All he did was explode stuff. And I feel like Batman does a little bit more than that. And I feel like Robin should have also did a little bit more. Like I mean, been more selective with like his. Uh, he should have been more like, uh, like you know, maybe a laser or something. You know, but he he did. He was he was he was very much the brains of the team. Very much the um, hacker. Um, and, 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 and like technology wise, he was the tech guy. Um, interestingly enough, cause you, you wouldn't expect this out of like a Tim, uh, not, not a Dick Robin, but uh, more like out of a Tim. But I, I mean, I guess Dick really is like the world most all arounder in terms of the Robins. Um, so this was, that was interesting to know. But other than that, it felt like he, he was there. He was able to, he was in fights. He wasn't like in the back. Like I said, and even the first episode he set up, he was the, he he created when they rescued Superboy. He was the one that that uh, like told them how which pillars to destroy so that they could uh, that they could that the building would collapse on top of uh, the villain at the time. I don't even remember the villain. He took a formula, um, but yeah. So so uh, there was a lot of so he was pretty much the brains. He pretty much had you know the the explosive gadgets. I was gonna say because besides that, I mean obviously he had his grappling hook that's that's iconic with batman too but very much just like explosions grappling hooks and tech which i feel like i feel like they kept it basic with him didn't want to do too much but i feel like robin could do a lot more now i think they explored his combat a lot lot more later on um obviously he wasn't no slouch um in any of the fights i don't think he was ever really losing any fights except who who was that that kind of had an upper hand on him uh it was in like it was when it was I can't remember the exact villain, but it, it was one guy that Robin couldn't even touch. I remember he was like you, you, you. <laughs> they in the early episodes too. They they would always they would always make jokes like oh they, the league couldn't they they couldn't they couldn't come they were too busy to come themselves. They sent they sent sidekicks or something like that. They made a lot of them jokes early on, but I can't. It was one of the early episodes. Robin kind of got got worked a little bit, but other than that, he was pretty much doing well. Held his own, obviously. And non superpower character, so he has to stay out of kind of a lot of the heavy hitter uh, fights. But yeah, once again, back to Flash though. Like literally, literally, I, I I feel like like the first episode was the most where he had like the most use of his power. He, he was pretty much the scout uh, in that in the very first episode. Like he would he would run ahead of everyone and be like, okay, yeah, this this coast is clear, or whatever, whatever. But he was doing it like ignorantly like he was just like um like just kind of just jumping ahead of everyone but but either way that was still pretty much what he should have been doing a lot of times was pretty much being a solo reconnaissance because at his speed most people shouldn't be able to track him uh at least easily and he should be able to get get gather into rather quickly um like i said they did give him an episode i guess they might have felt like he was being underdone or so but they get where he had to carry a heart across the uh like across the United States, because it it was the snow and no no car, it couldn't get carried there by no other way. So he had to run the heart um, all the way. So he had his own little episode shine there, and essentially it did it it, it kind of, but it also was counterintuitive because they said essentially how fast he was going at his top speed, and I'm like I'm like if he's that fast, why why can anyone react to him? And even if he doesn't have super strength. If he's able to move that fast and hit somebody, they it's pretty much gonna feel like they got hit by a train. So I don't, I never understood why he uh, he couldn't do as much, and and he would bounce off of bigger guys like Gorilla, Grodd, and things like I don't know if that was Grodd, but he would bounce off the gorillas. He would he would bounce off the, any of the bigger dudes. But it, it's like they would they would not be able to shrug him off that easy. Um, and let, I mean, but it could just be a, 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 a once again a a testament to his inexperience and his not like I said, he is really the slowest out of the speedsters. But yeah, they, I mean, they have to nerf them. 
But in reality, speedsters are always nerfed in comics and, and media. Like, The Flash has always done dirty, too. Um, but I, I feel like they really, like, underutilized him um, here. So, but, yeah, he played a, played a minor, minor, minor role. I feel like in a lot of the fight scenes, that's all my I got to say. It seems like anytime there was a fight fight, he was not much of a, he was not much help. Um. Now on to I'm, I'm gonna just go okay so we talked about Robin we talked about Flash I'm just go I'm gonna just keep going with the characters for now. Miss Martian was great. I did get kind of annoyed of her kept saying hello Megan all the time. That was kind of annoying. But other than that, um, everything else was pretty good. Um, with Miss Martian, I, I didn't. It was nothing I didn't like enjoy or anything. I she was pretty solid character um she couldn't i don't think i did oh well another testament to inexperience i guess is that this it, the same with wally being super quick she had okay now it wasn't invisibility she had camouflage now that there is a difference camouflage and invisibility are totally different she had camouflage, but they saw right through that S every time. Every time she used it, they that never worked. I don't think anyone ever fell for it. it besides like a normal human, a normal grunt level person fell for it. That was it. She got caught every time. So, um, yeah, so that was kind of funny <laughs> to see. Her. That girl could never catch a break. But she was also, and then if we're talking about nerfs, I mean, she also was nerfed too. Um, now, mind you, they were going against a lot of, of, like, the really... They weren't going against kitty bosses. They were going against real super villains. Like, um... Like, uh... Lex Luthor, Vandal Savage. Like, they are going against real super villains. They're, they weren't going against, like, no sidekick villains or nothing. So, I do understand some of the, um... I do understand why they weren't, at, like, able to do too too much if that makes sense i do understand um but yeah martian miss martian yeah she's another broken character that could have won a lot of the fights by herself um but yeah so she and, and, yeah her by herself pretty much could have won a lot of the fights but her hello megan kind of got annoyed other than that she was a really great character really nice um good now connor superboy um, I will say I felt like Superman did him dirty for sure early on, but but it makes sense, and, and I think it was explained by Luther at some point. He said he said you know he's so he, he he it's hard for him to accept accept something created by the enemy, and he sees the world kind of in black and white, but he you know he doesn't always see the, the gray side. And Superboy's kind of like in the gray. He was he's good, but he was made by the enemy. So but he, you know just kind of cautious, right? But, you know, he, he, he still was very kind of not rude, but just very blatantly, like, trying to um, shrug off Superboy. So, I can understand his frustration. Um, but, yeah, but Connor was mad, like, all the time. And, and it was it was almost annoying. Now, when he got the shields, when he got the shields and it made him angry, yes, that makes sense. Great. That's cool. Make him angry. Make him angry. He had, it, it, it's a side effect of whatever. Okay, that's that makes sense, right? That's, but his natural personality shouldn't always be angry either. That's why I didn't like. He always was mad about something it, and just couldn't. He couldn't talk about things. It was very much, you know, they, they very gave they gave him a set character, but it was hopefully, hopefully now. This is why I can't complain too much. Once again, he's only he was like just basically born, like he was only like six months or something. But, but here's the good thing. Is that like um, that they this does set up a room for character development in later seasons? So that's where it's like okay, he's mad and childish now, but later on, if he shows more maturity and all that, it shows okay, that's growth. And this and that that was basically a good setup. Now up front, it's just like it feels annoying seeing how often he gets mad, all the time things like that. So other than that, yeah, I like the idea of the shields. I like the idea of him being half Kryptonian, half Lex Luthor. Um, pretty much, yep. Um, they did him. That they did him right. His he seemed about right strength wise. He didn't, you know, pretty much. He without being able to fly, he was pretty much doing the best he he could without all the full powers. Um, so I don't know if later if they come up with some solution that he's pretty much at Superman's level all the time or not. I'm not 100 sure on that. But yeah, so 
Uh, yes, McGann, we talked about her, Superboy, for Aqualad, Aqualad, really great representation for the black people, I, I'll say that first and foremost, Aqualad was pretty much like the, really the most mature character at the time, one, I think he was for sure the oldest, I think, I think he was the oldest, but he definitely was the, like, the most mature, um, at the time, now, they also did a big foreshadowing, like, the first, like, the, the set, whenever they decide to pick a leader, I think it was the second episode, Robin immediately jumped to be leader, Robin immediately jumped to be leader, and then, um, like, wanted to be leader, but then he felt like he couldn't do it, so he kind of said, Kelder, you're probably the best for this, which logically made sense, Kelder was the most, Seemed like the oldest and most mature and just kind of like uh, really the almost the smartest guy in the room a lot of times. So, um, so yeah, really great choice. I like Kilder. Couldn't no complaints. Really great, really great representation of a new character that not a lot of people are familiar with because a lot of people knows, um, the other Aqualad. I forget his name already. Ah, darn, I forget his name. I was just looking at their names or the other day, but anyway, the one from Teen Titans, the original Teen Titans. He was in that one, and on like the the B team or something, um, or Titans West or something. He was on. I forget the name of the team, but he was on the other team, and I can't can't forget his. I can't remember his Atlantean name right now, but but yeah, the other Atlantean. So Gar, I, Gar, no, it wasn't. Car, no, Garf is the new Atlantean. I can't remember his name, but anyways, we're not gonna spend too much time on that. But he was. He, I can't. Not much to say about Aquila. Really great character. Really respected him. He did his job. I mean, he's great. One thing I didn't, I, I don't understand from a team is that they were mad at him for not speaking up about the mole. But why would someone go around and saying, hey, we have a mole on the team? Which, I mean, there's two things that can happen there is you're going to draw off the mole, right? You might actually yeah, look up and be like, oh, no, I, my cover's blown. I have to leave the team. So whoever leaves the team is obviously the mole. Or, 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 um, Or they the mole plays into denial and then they 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 they're more cautious now. So it I mean it can backfire or it could help one or two. So but th for them to feel so upset about him not mentioning it didn't make much sense to me. Um, but yeah, Kilder anyways, um, he did really great. Um, I I gotta respect Aqualad. No complaints for him. I I, I yeah he he's probably the most complete character, which is explains why they made him leader things like that. Um. Next, oh, also interesting enough about the orders, you you can know when someone joined the team based off of like their number order, um, and like you know when they enter doors and stuff like that. Like if you ever, I listen to those hard. Like I listen to who the number everyone. Batman's like zero two, Superman's like zero one. I think Wonder Woman zero three, and then Flash is like zero four. And I have like a whole list somewhere. So it's, it's on Google if you ever like want to know the numbers. But it's pretty much the order of which they join. So. So for the beta, their, for their teams, it would say B. It would say like B something. So Robin was like B01, Aqualad was 02, and then Kid Flash was 03. And right behind them, I think was Superboy, which was 04. And then they had McGann 05, and then I think Speedy was 06. And then they had Artemis at 07. If you, if you, interestingly enough, if you, if you go back and listen to, to the calls, um, but yeah, so speaking on Artemis, Artemis done, uh, wait, did we cover one else? Uh, yeah, Kilder, Alcala, yep. So Artemis, um, she was okay. She got a lot of screen time. I feel like later after she joined, um, she felt, she had a, she had a very interesting dynamic on the team. And I think she came in, her and Wally had beef immediately, and obviously end up as a couple later. Um, but I can't really think of any too many negatives for Artemis. She, she really, she did well. I mean, the only thing was she was suspected of being the mole, which pretty obviously wasn't her. But for me, going in, knowing who the mole was, I was like, it, even still, I think I would have caught that even back. Even if I didn't know the complete plot, I would have felt like she wasn't the mole. But they tried to they tried to paint it like she was because her family was 
part of the villains. So it kind of tried to like list it. Oh, you're 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 a mo. Oh, to go back on Superboy, also like um, everything else with Superboy's like back like backstory and how he's he's technically um, I forget the name of them already, but he's like he's he's like with the aliens, the telepathic ones, and they're trying to create their own little city and things like that. So he, he pretty much um, they consider him one of them, and yeah, things like that. So I, I do respect that, um, but. Yeah, he, he he's like everything but his character is really nice. They did him well, but size I feel like his character. But if there if that was a setup for later on, then that's then that's okay. Other than that, he was a, he's a solid character. Um, Artemis, like I said, solid. Like her, uh, felt like she. Uh, oh, I I didn't like how how wimpy they made her her first episode when when everyone got captured by the tornadoes in um the Reds, and then she she basically like. She basically was like finna dish them for a second, but ended up like finding the arrow um, that um, Kid Flash had collected earlier. I ended up saving them, but yeah. So that um, you know, pretty pretty. She was interesting. She grew. You know, it's pretty much what they wanted to establish that she was a newer hero and that she didn't know everything. Like like the other ones had been heroes for years, and then it really emphasized how long Robin had really been a hero. Cause she was freaking out and Robin was like, just chill out. We're, you know, we got this. And Robin was just handling it, you know, doing his normal explosion stuff. They might as well call it that man. Um, a pyrotechnic or something. I don't, <laughs> anyways, Robin, <laughs> that man was, exp- I, I, it was so hard not to notice. I'm like, every time Robin, I don't even know how he's, how he never just explode. It, it's no way he can carry that many explosives on him. And just none of them ever go off when he's fighting somebody or someone hits him really hard with a fireball or something. This man would be done for. He would he would be a human nuke bomb if he if if if, if all his gadgets went off at once. But anyways, um, but yeah, he uh he's also one of the top. Sorry, we already talked about Robin, Artemis, um, Zatanna. Really, I really lo- loved Zatanna when she came. Uh, she was uh. <laughs> She was she was she was great of a character. Not too much to really add on her. And also all of the later characters that got added on, I I can't remember like the sidekick of Icon or whatever. I can't, I can't remember her name because I don't think they ever said it too much. But the black girl that had like the force field powers, I'm not even. They never even like she came so late and they didn't elaborate much on her, which I didn't enjoy. But she came like last, but she seemed really helpful at least in that final fight the final few episodes and she was her she was pretty much like the last new character i think that joined and then on in season one and then um red arrow now like gotta talk about red arrow for a second he i i really respected him earlier because he felt the most mature like the way he acted now we learned later on the way his actions were all programmed but from like an older as an older person watching it I re- Roy's like logic and la- rationale made a lot more sense than everyone else's to me, or at least I he and he just felt and sounded more mature. Which found it out later that he was eighteen. I was like, okay, so that makes sense. He he is like the oldest in that team. But he comes back, he joins the team, he does his thing. Obviously, there's a big um confront between him and suspecting Artemis of being a mole, but that's just him deflecting, right? All right, so this video is coming up on 30 minutes, so we will actually, I'm going to just split these up into two parts just in case someone doesn't have time to watch an hour-long video. And also, I don't have the time right now to finish this at this exact moment. So I'm just going to cut this off. We're going to make a part two to it. So, but one thing I want to touch on, again, like I said, I think I covered all the characters so far. Um, I could, I could be, I feel like I'm missing just one. Cause so many started coming at the end that it was it was getting it was almost getting hectic. Cause I I think by the end of it they were starting to split the they were starting to already split the team into two by the end of it. Cause it was like oh we don't need we don't need everyone for this mission. Um, but I think uh yeah I, they showed Shazam quite a bit yeah but I, I did I th- okay this is what I was getting at Doctor Fate. So Doctor Fate basically became. The say like he he was the saving grace or like any time that they could not handle the situation we're finna doctor fate this thing right here put the helmet on someone's got to do with the job 
so Dr. Faith um pretty much was like like the 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 uh the get out of jail free card on a lot of the uh, in a lot of the battles um which I and that's I was getting at this just to mention that I feel like they should have did that with Kid Flash. They should have did that with Wally and I don't know and not the not the reference Teen Titans because these are totally two different two completely different like like continuity right and just team like and dynamics and just sort of because even just look at robin robin is the biggest like difference like he's the only character that appears in both osf i mean kid flash he's one of the main characters that appears in both uh, beast boy appears later but robin is just a totally different person by the time uh, compared to the shows but anyways um kid flash in the teen titan show he came like near the end he was so broken that he like literally beat like all the villains at the end like by himself or with the help but he pretty much saves the day but uh essentially like at the, the end like one of the end of the seasons or something like that but that's what they kind of should did with wally they should have made him like a, a part-timer like he should he should have not been able to make all the missions for whatever reason maybe school maybe his parents were co completely committed to the hero idea so he had to stay at home he had to do homework something like that to keep him from the team and i think that would have made him more interesting and when he came in, then he could have really flexed his power instead of making him there all the time and pretty much being a, a just a, he was almost almost he almost hurt the team more than help because a lot of times he just ended up getting caught or just doing something stupid. It, it was it's just pretty bad. But anyways, I feel like they should have made him more like rare and not as there. But I, I know they wanted to make him pretty much a staple member of that team, so he he had to be there. But I think uh, they should have probably just kept him away from the battle somehow to just keep him more to make it you know make him not as 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 weak as a character as he was um but yeah i think that's really all i want to cover I, i'm sorry i feel like this the current into a wally rant but it was just some hard hard it's something i just noticed a real lot throughout that because everyone else everyone else was pretty good everyone else didn't do they never struggled i mean everyone else had their you know you know, I like how early they they demonstrated that Kilder was Kilder was a heavy hitter. I mean, obviously Aquaman has superhuman strength too, so Kilder also has superhuman strength. He was he was before Superboy, he was pretty much the muscle of the team. Funny enough, and then Superboy came, then he was the muscle, um, and uh, Kilder became more of a technique guy with his magic and water manipulation. Uh, but yeah, I think that's all we're gonna cover for now. I would think next. Next part two, we're gonna, I want to. I think we're gonna just look through the episodes real quick and just kind of discuss, hit some key points in each one, each one, and just things I enjoyed and liked about each one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys as of now. If you guys did enjoy this, hit that thumbs up, hit that like button, and um, go ahead and subscribe. Like I said, part two should be right behind this one. If this, unless this one just comes up, and I, I take a little bit more time to make part two, but they should be like literally right behind each other if you want to catch the next one. Um, but yeah, we might pick it back up on some other thoughts too that I might have missed here. Um, also, leave a comment, um, and I'll be able to, you know, reply and let you guys know. Like, give me your thoughts or something, and I can, you know, give you my thoughts on any question or anything like that you might have had about the show, series, episode, something like that. Yeah, let me know, and we'll be uh, we'll be back with more. Peace out, man.